During an early dinner with my in-laws and husband, the home phone suddenly rang. It was unusual for the phone to ring at this hour. Puzzled, I answered, and the woman on the other end began speaking aggressively. When I asked for clarification, she shrieked, How dare you ask who I am? You're so rude. Well, I don't know who you are if you don't introduce yourself. My in-laws looked worried, and my husband gestured, Do you want me to take the phone? I shook my head. I should be able to handle it without hiding behind my protective husband. Could you please tell me your name? I calmly asked again. The woman became hysterical. I can't believe you don't know who I am. I'm never buying your eggplants again. I'll use cheap imported ones from now on. So, goodbye. She didn't identify herself, but I realized who she was when she mentioned eggplants. She was likely the wife of the president of the pickling company I had been dealing with for 15 years and with whom I had an exclusive contract. With the president gone, she was the only one who would bring up the contract. It's difficult to change things suddenly. We have an exclusive contract, and using locally grown special eggplants is what makes it popular, isn't it? Wouldn't it be bad to use imported ones? Idiot consumers don't know the difference between domestic and imported. I can buy imported ones for less than half your price. You're overcharging. At that point, I became angry. Overcharging? My eggplants can't be grown elsewhere, and the price is fair. No way anyone can grow eggplants in a home garden. It's a crime to sell such affordable vegetables at such a high price. Be thankful you're not being sued. I'm canceling the contract. What an incredibly rude person, fueled by anger, I said. Are you sure about canceling the contract? You won't be responsible for any regrets. No regrets. I'll make more money using cheaper imported eggplants. I'm relieved to be rid of an overcharging farmer like you. Stay away from us. As soon as the call ended, my concerned husband asked me, What happened, Lara? We heard a woman yelling. Are you okay? My mother-in-law frowned. I began explaining to my family. I'm Lara, 49 years old, a full-time eggplant farmer for pickles. I've been married to my husband, the eldest son of a rice farming family, for over 20 years. Our daughter lives alone in the city as a college student, and our son just got a job in the city after graduating from college. My son told me, I'll come back when I find a bride, but I don't rely on that too much. My energetic in-laws and husband, who are approaching 80, are growing rice in their family home, while I and some part-timers are growing eggplants for pickling. The start of eggplant production was 15 years ago, and my hometown's small pickling eggplants had been famous since ancient times. However, these eggplants, while incredibly delicious, are known to be difficult to cultivate. They were weak against diseases and pests and would wither quickly. When I started selling them in small quantities at local direct sales outlets, I was approached by a local pickle company to enter into an exclusive contract. Due to the difficulty of cultivation, the exclusive contracts offered a considerably higher price than selling regular eggplants in the market. When I heard about the deal, I was excited and thought it sounded interesting, but I was scared of being sued for a breach of contract if the cultivation failed and I ended up in the red. As I was worrying, my husband said, we have income from rice, so let's give it a try even if it doesn't work out. And so, my challenge began. I continued to try better cultivation methods every year, working diligently for 15 years despite many failures. The scale of the pickling company increased as they started selling online, and the volume of eggplants I delivered grew accordingly. Some companies heard that I was solely responsible for producing pickling eggplants and approached me for business, but I had no intention of expanding my eggplant production further. The exclusive contract was more difficult than I had expected. Although the income was stable with a fixed contract price, I had to deliver a certain amount without fail. I began to think that once my in-laws retired from the front lines of rice farming and my husband and I took over as the main rice farmers until our son took over the family business, it might be okay to quit the exclusive contract. However, I owed a debt of gratitude to the company president, so I continued to deliver the best eggplants every year as long as they wanted them. But last month, the situation changed drastically. At the beginning of last month, the company president collapsed at the factory and never returned. The president passed away last month, right? Hasn't it been 49 days yet? My mother-in-law murmurs. 
It was so sudden, poor thing. My mother-in-law sympathizes with the president, making a pained face. It's a relief that there's a successor, but he won't be able to return for a while, right? To my husband's words, my father-in-law responds, he was training at another pickling company. The president's son, who was supposed to become the next president, is studying know-how at another pickling company and is in charge of important transactions, so he can't quit right away. While the son is away, the president's secretary and executives were discussing how to keep the business going when the president's wife suddenly interfered, causing turmoil within the company, which I had also briefly heard about. I wonder if the president's wife can't mourn her husband's sudden death or observe a period of mourning. She should have other things to do. Everyone nods in agreement with my mother-in-law's grumbling. Anyway, I'll check the situation. I'd be in trouble if the contract was unilaterally terminated. I called the president's secretary the next day. Did you get it? Called to Lara. I'm so sorry you seemed very tired. Are you okay? The president's secretary, who usually had a lively atmosphere, had a quite downcast voice. It's not okay. I think our company is going to go bankrupt. I've been let go, so I can't help anymore. I'm sorry. What? What do you mean you're being let go? When I asked in surprise, I was told that the president's wife was the cause. The president's wife, without understanding the basics of management, made unreasonable demands on various business partners and repeatedly harassed the employees. Originally, the president's wife was selfish and had a tough personality. The president knew about her personality and never let her be involved in the business. Now that the president is gone, the company is in chaos. The ideal company for the president's wife is one where she only makes money. She only thinks about how to use business partners and employees as cheaply as possible. There's no way a company can run like that. The president's secretary complained and continued, "You should give up on them, Lara. With your eggplants, you'll find new business partners in no time." But we have an exclusive contract, and I was planning to deliver properly, at least this year, for the late president's sake. When I added that last part, the president's secretary sighed. I never thought the president would pass away so suddenly. It's really terrible. Now, because of the president's wife, long-time employees and part-timers are being forced to quit. Older people can't work as much as young people, and regular employees cost money. She's trying to hire only cheap foreign workers. Our pickles' taste is our selling point, so there's nothing more valuable than experienced employees. Talent is treasure. Even though there's an exclusive contract, she doesn't understand common sense. It's best to get away. That's how far it went. I was horrified after the call. I immediately consulted with my husband. Maybe it's time to cut ties, but there's the contract. My husband muttered with a troubled face. Yes, we've exchanged official documents. A few days later, we officially received documents stating that the pickle company was breaking the contract. What is this? Even to an amateur, this looks like nonsense, doesn't it? I thought the secretary was a decent person. The documents were so sloppy that we couldn't help but let out these words. Seeing that both my husband and I made up our minds, we're not at fault. And luckily, it's before planting season. So it might be a good time to quit. My husband's words made me lean towards quitting, but I was worried about the reduced income over the summer, the part timers, and various other things we had struggled and experimented with until now, and things were finally going well. I didn't find it amusing to be suddenly forced to quit for such an unreasonable reason. My husband nodded at my words. Let's think about income and the future later. I can't forgive the way she treated you, Lara. It's their loss. They can't have cheap, low-quality imports bought just because they're cheap. In the highest quality products made by us farmers with pride lumped together. That's true. So my husband and I decided to stop the exclusive contract from this year and not deliver eggplants, even if they bent. Then summer came after. I quit the exclusive contract. Several pickle companies immediately offered contracts, and my husband and I carefully considered and contracted the best conditions, increasing our income by about twenty percent. We found new shipment destinations for the eggplants, and as we worked busily every day, I almost forgot about the rude president's wife. One day, my mother-in-law came to my workplace with an eggplant pickle. Laura, this is awful. Look, 
It says locally produced, but that's not true, right? My mother-in-law brought this year's eggplant pickles from the pickle company. They said they'd use imported ones, but it says locally produced here. I was surprised when I looked at the package. Let's try it anyway. Upon my mother-in-law's suggestion, my father-in-law, husband, and the part-timers gathered to taste it, and the flavor was completely different than before. There's no way this is locally produced. First of all, it's not bite-sized. They're using large eggplants and pickling them. They're treating consumers like fools, my mother-in-law asserted with a stern face. The taste is strange, too. It doesn't feel like it's just gone bad. It's like it's gone rotten. The part-timer also made a harsh comment. Could it be that the president's wife is lying about the imported products being local? But honestly, I thought she might do something like that. A few days later, during dinner, the phone rang again. Hey, can you pretend you sold me your eggplants? The voice didn't introduce herself, but I remembered it. It was the president's wife. I don't remember selling you eggplants and you're asking me to lie? Yes, if you say so, it'll save our company. Weren't you supposed to never contact me again? That was true, but things have changed. You want money too, right? I'll give you some. It's just a small favor. Her high-handed tone, trying to involve me in her crime, was unbelievable. No, thank you. I refused and hung up, then told my husband and in-laws what had happened. Everyone grinned. My husband, in particular, seemed pleased. She must have regretted it right away. There's no way your eggplants and those inferior imported ones are the same. Actually, after my mother-in-law brought the pickles, I received calls from various people because I had been the one making the eggplant so far. According to information from the current pickle company, they have received numerous complaints from consumers and even been reported to the authorities. Apparently, the pickle company's in trouble now because they were internally accused of food fraud. Then, a few days later, please testify that they were your eggplants. The police might investigate. I recognized a voice which didn't introduce herself from before. This time it was almost sobbing. Well, I didn't sell them, I hung up again. The next day, a polite call came from a young man claiming to be the president's son. I'd like to meet and apologize, he said. So, we decided to meet that afternoon. I asked my in-laws to do the afternoon farm work and my husband and I waited. A young man, another young man, and a flashy older woman arrived. One was the president's son, the other his current secretary, and the woman was the president's wife. The two men were very polite, but the president's wife had a stony attitude, skipping greetings. The son forced the president's wife to bow her head, and they both prostrated themselves, rubbing their heads on the floor as they apologized. Although I knew the situation, is there any way you could supply eggplants again? The son pleaded, but I refused. I'm sorry, but it's impossible. You terminated our exclusive contract. I felt sorry for the son, but considering the president's wife's attitude and that we already had a contract with another company, it was truly impossible. He understood when I told him my honest feelings. Far from it, the president's son seemed to think it was only natural that I would refuse. I guess you're right. I'm very sorry for this. We unilaterally terminated the exclusive contract due to our circumstances, so we'll pay the penalty as initially agreed upon. He easily gave up and began preparing the documents with his secretary. Then, the president's wife widened her eyes. What are you thinking? We've been ripped off until now, so there's no need to pay the penalty. We got caught this time, but we can do better next time. It's the importer's fault that more than half of the imported eggplants were rotten. If we find a cheaper place, it'll be fine. So, you tried to use cheap imports and failed miserably. That's what Laura told you, right? When her husband made a sarcastic comment, the two young men said, Indeed, that's exactly right, and hung their heads. I was concerned about the president's wife's words and asked her again, By the way you're talking, are you planning to continue labeling the products as locally produced even if you can't get my eggplants? Of course, it's more profitable, and everyone is doing it. The president's wife showed no remorse and started yelling at me. My husband and I were both taken aback. That's when the president's son lost his temper. Mom, just be quiet. I only brought you here today to apologize, but I'm fed up with you. 
Upon being scolded by her son, the president's wife was flustered. I was just trying to make money. You only think about making money for yourself. That's not how a company should operate. But isn't it a company for making money? I was irritated by the clueless president's wife. Although on a different scale, I also employ part-time workers. It's not right to think that it's okay to lie as long as you make a profit. I believe that a fair relationship where both employees and contracted farmers like us can make legitimate profits is the right one. It's wrong for only one side to profit at my words. The son, the young secretary, and my husband all nodded. You're right. Mom, who doesn't understand that, is finished as a person at the company. I'll cut ties with her. However, she needs to take responsibility for ruining dad's company. Upon hearing her son's declaration of disownment, the president's wife seemed to be affected for the first time. She was so shocked. She turned pale and silent. She suddenly became stunned and docile. After that, the case was deemed malicious, involving intentional mislabeling of the origin. It was written in both letters in the local newspaper that the police had started investigating for fraud, and it became a big news story in the area for a while. The pickle company eventually went bankrupt, and the president's wife was abandoned penniless by her son, fearing prosecution and living in hiding. The president's son and the veteran employees who returned at his call are working hard to deal with the aftermath and establish a new company. I received the penalty for the breach of the exclusive contract, and the matter was settled. Since then, my son has returned and decided to take over the farm. He seems to have found a bride who will happily work on the farm with him. With the happy news, our family's daily life has become very enjoyable.